Hi everybody, now we are going to look into, this is part two of our weeks three and four lectures in uh, microbiology lab. Just reviewing some of the experiments that you have learned about online in our course shell and through Connect. I just want to review them with you just so you're prepared for your midterm practical. The next experiment we're going to talk about is aerotolerance. In the aerotolerance test, we are trying to determine the oxygenic growths for um, uh, growth requirements of different bacteria. And in microbiology, we do sometimes classify organisms based on their oxygenic requirements for growth. In this particular test, we are using what's called the BHI DEEP. BHI stands for brain heart infusion. This is a type of agar that is very nutrient dense and helps to support the growth of uh, anaerobic organisms. The test tubes are very tall. They are called 16 millimeter test tubes. They're quite large and we fill them about three quarters of the way full of molten agar. So we make the agar, the agar comes as a powder, we mix it with water to a certain concentration and then we put it into the autoclave. In autoclaving, uh, part of the process because it's in a vacuum and we boil it at a much higher temperature, autoclaving removes oxygen from our media. So agar, when we get taken out of the autoclave, does not have any o dissolved oxygen in it. The oxygen has been uh, removed through the autoclaving process. When we take the deeps out of the uh, incubator, out of the, I'm sorry, out of the uh, autoclave, we then put them in a hot water bath. And the hot water bath <clears throat> is cooler than autoclaving temperatures, uh, but it still keeps our agar in a liquid or molten form. As these guys, as these tubes sit in that water bath for several hours, they begin to absorb oxygen. So oxygen starts to get reabsorbed into the media and it diffuses from the top of the tube to the bottom. So here on the right, I have a drawing of a tube and at the very top of course, of course this is atmospheric levels of oxygen. So the same level of oxygen that we have in our, in our air. Now, as we move down the tube towards the bottom, here at the top, our O2 concentrations are fairly high, right? Because we have a lot of diffusion of oxygen, but as we move down the tube, our O2 levels begin to get very low, right? So the oxygen levels decrease. And even here at the very bottom of the tube, we have no O2. We could actually have uh, complete anaerobic conditions. While the agar is in molten form, we're going to add a liquid culture. We're going to take a culture that's growing in a broth. We're going to add some pre-measured amount of that liquid culture into our our molten agar. We then roll the tube around and this will distribute the bacteria throughout the tube. So we have bacteria uh, distributed at the top, in the middle, and in the bottom. And this now distributes the bacteria throughout the entire oxygen gradient. Once we have rolled the tube around for a few minutes, we don't shake it because we don't want to disrupt that oxygen gradient. So we simply just roll it. After we've rolled it for a couple of minutes, we stick it into an ice bath. This is going to solidify the agar very quickly and trap bacteria from our inoculate. It's going to trap our inoculate in all the different oxygen gradients throughout the tube. Now that the agar is in its solid form, the bacteria are kind of trapped in that area of the tube. And we're going to put the tube in an incubator and incubate it for 24 to 48 hours. After 24 to 48 hours, our bacteria have now had the opportunity to grow. And what we're going to look for is areas in the actual tube itself that growth has occurred. Now, growth is observed as the agar becoming very cloudy. If there's growth, the, the agar will be very cloudy. If there's no growth, the agar will be clear. In addition to cloudiness, some of our anaerobic organisms may use fermentation. It's important to remember that one of the byproducts of fermentation from bacteria is CO2 and particularly CO2 gas. So when CO2 gas is released from the fermentative process, this indicates that growth is occurring, fermentation is happening, and the CO2 gas will actually build up some gas pressure inside of the tube and cause cracking or, air, or small bubbles to form within the agar. So if we see cracks and areas in the agar um, that are opened up, then we are looking at CO2 gas from fermentation, which further indicates growth in that part of the tube. To start and understand where our different <clears throat> growth categories are, let's take a look at this drawing. 
In our first category, group A, these organisms only grow, you can see they grow only up here at the top and on the surface of the tube. These are referred to as obligate aerobes. They are obligated to grow in an, in an uh, aerobic environment. They are obligated to grow in the presence of oxygen. They can only grow in the presence of oxygen. So that's what is meant by obligate. In tube B here, we have the opposite. Now we have growth only where oxygen is absent. So we would refer to these organisms as obligate anaerobes. In our next tube, we have what are called facultative. They're sometimes referred to as facultative anaerobes, but we just call them facultative. Now, facultative organisms are organisms that are capable of altering or switching their metabolism depending on the oxygen levels that are present. For example, here at the top and on the surface of the tube, we have the heaviest amount of growth. We have a whole lot of growth going on here at the top. This is because oxygen is present in a high enough level for the organism to utilize cellular respiration. They're using, aer they're using um, aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic cellular respiration is the most efficient of the ATP uh, producing pathways. And we get the most ATP from this pathway. So it makes sense that our organism is going to be able to grow in a really high concentration where oxygen levels are very high because it can use aerobic cellular respiration. As we move down the tube, the O2 levels, remember over here, the O2 levels are decreasing and they become too low to support aerobic cellular respiration. So in this bottom part of the tube, it's using an anaerobic metabolism, in this case, fermentation. We oftentimes will see this, we'll see some cracks and such in the agar where fermentation is taking place. Well, the whole tube will be very cloudy. But the top of the tube will be cloudy and solid, and the bottom of the tube is cloudy with usually some bubbles or cracks and that sort of thing in the agar, indicating that fermentation is occurring in the bottom portion of the tube and aerobic cellular respiration is occurring in the top. Now, our next tube, tube D, is an, a type of organism known as aerotolerant, and this um, drawing, unfortunately, is a little deceiving. Uh, aerotolerant organisms do not grow up at the surface. They actually start their growth about a quarter inch below the surface. The O2 levels up here are most often are far too high for our aerotolerant organisms to, to grow. They will grow throughout the bottom three quarters of the tube. Now, during this, they are going to be using fermentation. These are anaerobic organisms. Aerotolerant organisms only utilize anaerobic metabolism, whether it's fermentation or anaerobic cellular respiration may be uh, uh, organism dependent. But either way, they are only using anaerobic metabolism. They are just capable of using anaerobic metabolism in the presence of low levels of oxygen. So in this case, these organisms can tolerate oxygen, but they do not use the oxygen. They just simply ferment in the presence of it. Our last organism is a microaerophile. Now, microaerophiles are what I refer to as the Goldilocks of the, um, of the oxygenic requirement world. Uh, these guys will not grow where oxygen levels are too high. They won't grow where oxygen levels are too low. They only want to grow where levels are just right. So they require oxygen for growth. They have to have oxygen, but they have to have that oxygen in a very, very um, specific concentration. They can't grow if it's too much and they can't grow if it's too little. They're very specific or very picky about where their growth occurs. So let's take a look at what these look like in actual tubes themselves. <clears throat> these are, this is a set of um, aerotolerance tubes from our actual laboratory at Central Campus. And these tubes show everything except for an obligate anaerobe. We do not have the equipment to grow an obligate anaerobe in our laboratory. So we have everything else but. So let's take a look at our review questions here. Which tube shows the growth of an aerotolerant organism? Take a look at those tubes. I'll give you a second and see if you can't determine which one is aerotolerant. Okay, we're going to give you the answer here. The aerotolerant organism is organism B. Organism B is not growing on the surface. 
you can see it's very clear until we get to this line right here. Right along here, we have a lot of growth. And as we move down the tube, you can see the cracks in the agar, cracks here, even gas pressure build up in the bottom of the tube. So the bottom three quarters of the tube is um, cloudy. We see growth, cracks in, in, in the agar from CO2 build up from fermentation, but there's no growth at the top. So this is our aerotolerant. I'll just put aerotolerant here. Next, which tube shows the growth of an obligate aerobe? The answer to this one is tube A. If we take a look at tube A, we have this white film on the surface. We see lots of growth on the surface. And actually, once we get below the surface, we don't see any growth. The tube is very clear throughout the rest of it. There's no cracks, no air bubbles, nothing like that, no cloudiness. So this organism is only capable of growing in the presence of oxygen, of high levels of oxygen. It requires, it must have oxygen for growth and lots of it. Which tube shows the growth of a facultative organism? Now the answer to this one is tube C. In tube C, you can tell we have growth. We have lots of growth up here at the top. So right about from here to here, we have this white film on the surface, similar to our obligate aerobes. So we have growth on the surface in really high atmospheric levels of oxygen. Dense growth, dense cloudiness here in the top of the tube. So this would be cellular respiration occurring. But when we get down to this part of the tube here, we don't have enough oxygen. You can see there's bubbles starting to pop up. We've got um, some cracks in the agar from CO2 buildup. That's indicating fermentation. So what we have is we have cellular respiration at the top of the tube, and then when the oxygen levels get too low, the organism switches and uses uh, anaerobic metabolism. That's a facultative organism. It is capable of both forms of metabolism. And so that means that the last tube, of course, D, is our microaerophile. No growth where we have lots of oxygen. You can see this tube is very clear. looks almost like our uh, aerotolerant organism. Our growth starts right here. This is where the oxygen gradient is finally low enough for this organism to begin growing. The growth continues throughout the tube until about here. Right about here, the growth stops. You can see how it's very cloudy. There's kind of this growth along here. And then the bottom of the tube is nice and clear. This is where the O2 levels are too low for these microorganisms to grow. So this is the aerotolerant test. Um, I hope that uh, uh, this was helpful in understanding how to read these aerotolerance test tubes. Uh, and I hope this helps you with your practical exam. See you in the next one.